TSMC. TSMC is so good at manufacturing CPUs that the tech minister or the minister in there in Taiwan, somebody associated with the government of Taiwan and TSMC is claiming that they're so good, they are 10 years ahead of China because of their two nanometer tech. Uh, two nanometer means the node, right? So look at this wafer. So that's what I was talking about right here. So they produce, the, this is a wafer. That's why they get the name chips. Um, and you can see each CPU. So there's what, probably 75, 70 CPUs in that one wafer. So remember, Samsung's only producing 20% that are good, meaning that they can actually put in devices and they have to throw away the other eight out of 10. TSMC is doing the opposite. TSMC is so good at it. Now they're on two nanometer. They're 80%, eight out of 10 are good and that they put in devices and 20%, who knows what they do with them. But their technology, it's not just their high yield rate, the technology, how they manufacture these, how they pack these um, is world renowned. Nobody else does it. They actually have a, a, a process that's patented um, and the TSMC tech minister says they're 10 years ahead of China. So China has desperately been trying to get into the CPU world, the chip manufacturing world. Now, um, not much knowledge, not, not much information has come out of China in regards to their manufacturing process, what they're being put in, what they're being used for. I wouldn't use a Chinese CPU if you paid me. Right. If China came to me next year and said, hey, I'll pay you a million dollars. I'll give you 120 grand per month um, or 100 grand per month. If we want to we'll sponsor eSIM Studios, but I want you to use this uh, Xiaomi, the new Xiaomi 15. And we're going to put a China CPU in there. I mean, we want to be your sponsor. Uh, <laughs> I would say, hell no. I wouldn't try to touch that with a 10 foot pole, let alone put my account in there and put all my apps on there. No, I'm not doing it. And I don't think the rest of the world will either. That's why I don't think China's chip making endeavors are gonna succeed. Nobody trusts China uh, for anything. They're gonna embed it with all sorts of spyware, malware. Um, and they're probably gonna, whenever they, now one day they try and take over the world, they'll probably, after stealing all your information for the last six months, they'll just end up uh, shut down your phone. And I'm sure they'll steal all your money before they do that. But, um, let's see here. TSMC, I, uh, let's see here. So, a nanometer, well, I won't go down the whole entire manufacturing process. It is a lengthy, and it's hard to, it's hard to, it's not hard to explain, but it is hard to, uh, I would love to go, um, absolutely love to go tour. I would love to go to Taiwan and tour their facilities. I know they, they essentially have something like that where you can tour. I've seen some uh, tech channels do that. Man, you know what? I might try and do that. Um, not saying this year, next year, but um, I might look into that, honestly, and see if I can uh, go tour. That would be so much fun. See how everything is made, make a video about it. Um, and look, their TSMC 7 nanometer chip manufacturing process technology first entered in mass production in 2018. Um, now progressing to two, two nanometers since then, the pace of evolution in semiconductor manufacturing is not linear if the chip manufacturers do not have access to the same machines. So the way that they make them is very special. Now they're probably going to get settled in on two nanometer. Now they're in the, because every year, like Going back to 2018, when they introduced a seven nanometer node, that just tells you the another uh, way to measure how big it is, right? Nanometer uh, is a measurement, obviously, and it gets smaller 
and smaller and smaller every year. So it went from seven nanometers in 2018 to six nanometers in 2019 to five nanometers in 2020. And then it continues to go smaller and smaller and smaller, but you can't go down all the way to zero. You won't have a CPU. <laughs> so that that's basically what I think where we're at now. And even because if they could have gone down to one nanometer, look, I'm sure they've, uh, I'm sure they've tested everything and I'm sure they've, um, uh, tried to get one. I'm sure they've tested one nanometer nodes. Again, you can't go down to zero cause there'd be nothing, but I think they've settled in on two nanometers. I think that's where we're going to settle at least for the near future. I say future, maybe in next couple years, but they're already on their second generation two nanometer node. So they've already produced a two nanometer, which is in many flagship CPUs right now. Um, but I believe they're on this eight gen four will be on the second gen of the two nanometer. So it's going to be even more powerful and even more power efficient while continuing on, on the same size node. Um, so I've actually a side note, I've actually been looking into buying and stocking them. They're that, um, they're that much more advanced than any other manufacturer, CPU manufacturer in the world. And as more older people die off, um, you have more younger people being born. And over the next 10, 15, 20 years, you're going to have the, the, the CPU demand is going to get more in, is going to get greater and greater and greater. And uh, they're just leaps and bounds ahead of everybody. I don't see anybody that can, at least in the foreseeable future, that can catch up with them as far as they are spot on what they do. They are the absolute best in the world. Now, MediaTek, look, it looks like they're putting together some fantastic CPUs. Um, Samsung's falling off a cliff. Um, who else manufactures? Actually, you know what? I'm stupid. I think MediaTek CPUs are, are manufactured by TSMC. I'm thinking of manufacturer. Uh, there's TSMC, there's Samsung, and China is trying to manufacture. And if I'm if I'm missing if I'm missing a CPU manufacturer actually who puts them together, please leave a comment. Um because at the moment they don't have any competition. Right? So in my opinion, I think it would be a good investment. Don't take my advice. I mean, this is not 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 financial advice, but I, I have been looking into it the last three to four days. I think I'm going to make a minor investment into into them. Um, I just don't see the demand getting any smaller for them. In fact, it's I believe it's going to do the be the opposite. It's going to continue to grow higher and higher and higher. Now to end this live stream, one quick story that really really bugs me uh speaking of samsung and i want to get your opinion too and I, I think i have the pulse on most people's opinion on this so if you're not familiar samsung one ui 7 which has been delayed for a while was supposed to be when it was first announced it was supposed to hit our devices already uh it's been delayed so this one ui 7 is supposed to be the biggest change for samsung user interface graphical user interface um ever right even biggest even biggest upgrade since uh, even a bigger upgrade in the way it looks and feels than when touch Wiz turned into one ui do you remember that touch Wiz? what was it on like the samsung was it the s5 or s6 i think it had touch Wiz. and then when the s7 i think it was no it was s7 i think going into s8 is when they started one ui Something like that. It's even a bigger change than that. So they're going to totally revamp animations. They're going to revamp um, basically everything. The code, um, apps, app drawers. They're going to have a scrollable app drawer up and down instead of side to side. Um, but it looks like a really, really cool um, operating system. But there's one major issue it really bugs me, and I know it bothers a lot of people. So it appears that Samsung is going to copy Apple, unfortunately, copy iOS, and not just a little bit. It looks like they're going to copy them a lot, which I do not like because it just incurs more people to make fun of Android, more people to make fun of Samsung, 
it just it just generates more laughter and more trolling from Apple fanboys um, to shit on Samsung, right? And I love Samsung phones. I use them. I've have a Samsung phone uh, in my possession for years. Um, but I'm not happy about this. So <laughs> their Samsung Gallery here. We're looking at the new S25 Ultra. The new Samsung Gallery app. You know how Samsung Gallery has the kind of flower. Is it a flower looking animation? Well, look at this. Look at look at this. <sighs> so One UI 6.1.1, which we're on right now, has the Gallery app on the left. Samsung One UI 7 Gallery app is going to have the icon on the right, which is exactly like exactly identical to Apple to iOS gallery app. Uh, you could have picked any other design in the world. You could have even had my head on there, right? Uh, you could you could have a, a picture of a squirrel, anything except Apple's gallery icon. What are you doing? Now, I hope Samsung CEO steps in because when uh, when Samsung released the new Galaxy Buds 3, he was apparently very upset that it essentially they look like AirPods. The the charging case, um, how you open them, they're the stem design. They look pretty damn similar. Now they do have one slight difference, uh, where instead of on the stem, instead of it being a a a cylinder that comes down on the stem out of the earbud, it's actually like a triangle design. But if you look at them in a certain way, they look identical, right? Just a little different color, that gray, black, but they have white ones. The the base Buds 3 and Buds 3 Pro look very, very similar to Apple. There was a story that came out last month that Samsung CEO was livid, was up, very upset. In fact, was raising his voice in, from what I read, cursing people out in, the, in a boardroom meeting. And so Samsung has many divisions, right? They make they make uh, washing machines, refrigerators, shit. They make vacuums, air air freshener, uh, air filters, phones, obviously. So each Samsung has a they have a mobile division, they have a houseware division, they have an accessories division, and then each so like Samsung mobile division has a head of the mobile division, and then he oversees everything underneath him in the mobile division. But he has to answer head of the mobile division has to answer to the head of Samsung. How the Samsung CEO was not briefed before the release of these products that they copied Apple on how they could just push those to get manufactured and approved and put for sale without the Samsung CEO even seeing them uh, blows my mind. Because this story came out that he was very upset at them copying Apple after these buds were released. And the watch, it was the watch, it was the watch ultra. He was upset at the watch ultra. Which tells me, if the story comes out weeks after the devices are, are are launched, that tells me he had no idea what these looked like. And this story only came out when he found out what they looked like when we found out what they looked like. How, how is that even possible? Um, and I, I pray to God that he changed something internally and says, all right, well, you have to run it through me every time we release something or do a major update or approve something. I have to give you the seal of approval instead of just pushing it through. Because when he sees this, he's going to flip shit. Um, I mean, it's, and it's not just the gallery icon. The, the camera app, it looks just like Apple, just like the iPhone. The, oh shit, what was it? Do I have photos? Check this out. Let's do a real quick search and I got to get out of here. The iPhone's definitely going to be sold by the time I'm over. Uh, uh, what is it? What is it? Uh, One UI. UI 7. So let's look at this. Images. So let me bring you over here. So Google One UI 7. I don't want iOS. I want 7. So we can look at this. So look at this. 
Look at this insane icon pack. Wait, this is on Samsung's website. God damn it. Look at this. Now you tell me, does that not look like Apple? Does that not look like an iPhone? So you have the camera app that looks like the an iPhone camera app. You have the settings app, which looks like the iPhone settings app. Uh, I don't know what, what, what does Apple use as their browser? Uh, what is it called? Safari? Does that look like Safari? Contacts looks just like the Apple icon. Weather, I think, looks just like the Apple icon. Um, it just, it blows my mind. Gallery looks pretty similar to the Apple icon. Phone looks exactly like the Apple icon. Clock looks pretty similar. Like, what are we doing? You couldn't pick any other icon, right? It couldn't be any more clear you're trying to copy Apple. And this is on Samsung's website, samsung.com. Oh. Anyways, um, I cannot believe this shit. Look at this. So we got, here's one UI 7. It's gonna have new battery indicator, vertical app drawer, dark mode icons, Apple, dark mode period. Smooth animations, create your own Galaxy avatar, Apple. Actually, I think Samsung came out with that first, but Apple made it popular. New home screen customizations. Redesigned app icons, Apple. Galaxy AI, uh, AI is more advanced than ever. Beta early August. New lock screen customizations. Even the flashlight looks like Apple. Biggest change to One UI ever. Yeah, because you're going to turn it into a freaking... You're going to turn it into an iPhone icon pack or theme. It's basically what it is. Separate notification and quick settings for clutter-free experience. Um, Jesus Christ. Well, I know I'll be installing a theme once my One UI 7 gets in. Just absolutely insane. Blows my mind that they're just letting this fly. Um, anyways, we'll leave it there. Uh, when does the one plus 13? Well, you know, um, it's supposed to be later this month. I think it was for, let's find out. Uh, they changed it recently. Um, it's going to be mid to late October. Um, Agent 4 is supposed to be announced on the 12th, I think, or 13th, something like that. And then you're going to see, basically, a few days later, um, OnePlus will announce and or have a launch party. So, Agent 4 announcement in a week and a half, and then you'll get OnePlus 13 in two to three weeks so it's just literally right around the corner i don't think there is a unless something just came out i don't think there's a official launch time but it is going to be a couple weeks away okay let's see i uh, don't have anything official on the launch date But, um, it's just, it'll be right around the corner. So, uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel and we're definitely going to cover that. I'm definitely going to get that phone. Um, so and we'll have a launch party for that whenever it's launched. Come, uh, come here. Well, I think OnePlus allows me to stream, restream their, uh, their channel. So, uh, come over here. We'll discuss it. Um, and, uh, let me know if you got one. I'm definitely going to get one. And uh, Android fans shall rejoice. But that'll do it for today. Eastim Studios obviously went way over on my time, but I got eight stories today. So appreciate it. Uh, we will definitely be back tomorrow. And you never know, I might just have an iPhone on tomorrow's episode. But um, let me go see if I can go grab one real quick. Appreciate the time. Please be safe. Enjoy the rest of your day. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Peace.